Just two weeks away from the presidential election, the state of the economy is really weighing heavily on the minds of voters, including, of course, the rise of inflation, as well as the national deficit. Here to discuss this and so much more, Steve Moore, Trump economic advisor and co-author of the new book, The Trump Economic Miracle. Welcome, Steve. Good morning, Angela. Let's talk about what's happening here. Despite the recent rise in wages being faster than inflation, that is happening under the Biden-Harris administration, real median earnings remain in a downward trend, being below 1.3% of inflation since Biden took office. Now, could this be the reason why so many Americans, and we're, we're seeing this in the polling, there's just so many Americans are really at this point just dissatisfied, according to polling, with the current state of the economy. Yeah, I was just looking at some polling, Angela, yesterday that shows about two thirds of Americans think the country is headed in the wrong direction, and that, that's a that's a bad number. And I do think that chart that you have on the screen is explaining a little bit why that is. Now, there's good news and bad news on that chart. You can see that uh, you know the red areas are the decline in people's um, incomes, mm -hmm. and that was worst in uh, 2021 and 2022. Remember when we had that nine percent inflation? Right. Now the is the inflation has really come down a lot, and thank God. But as that chart is showing you, people are still, on average, a little bit poorer today when you adjust for inflation in terms of their buying power than they were four years ago. I think that explains why people are still not in a great mood about their uh, current economic condition. And then a lot of people are not in a good mood also when it comes to the national debt surging another $2.3 trillion, um, a favored Democratic solution. We've heard this over and over again for forever, that to make the rich pay their fair share, they say. Uh, currently, the top 1%, according to some charts that we have, pay 45% of the federal income tax. Um, you say this proposal wouldn't be enough. Why do you say that? Uh, yeah. I, I bet that chart probably surprises people because you know we keep hearing that the rich don't pay their fair share, and uh, it is uh, we have a pretty progressive tax system. You can see one percent of people—that's one out of a hundred richest—pay almost half of the income tax. That's a lot. And then um, you know you see that the, uh, the lower fifty percent don't really pay all that much of the income tax at all. So I think this chart is illustrative of the point that. You know this this mythology that you know the bill gates and the warren buffett's and the lebron james of the world aren't paying taxes they're paying a lot of tax i i really think right now the problem isn't that we don't have enough tax revenue you know you mentioned that mm -hmm. two trillion dollar deficit mm -hmm. running. i think it's an overspending problem and i do like this idea that trump has of putting someone like elon musk in charge of finding waste and fraud and abuse in the in the budget and, and getting rid of some of that wasteful spending. I don't think people would even notice it was missing. You know, some people, when they, we hear uh, cutting, they always think about what Social Security and Medicaid, some of those entitlement programs, that a lot of politicians simply just don't want to touch. Right, and uh, look, I think there's so much waste and redundancy mm -hmm. uh, in, in government programs. You don't have to cut people's uh, you know, benefits. You don't have to cut uh, the programs that really matter to people. We need to just find programs that really aren't working or have been around for 100 years that aren't doing much. We still have a problem, by the way. We talked about this, Angela, a few weeks ago, and the Washington Post had a story about this the other day. We still have a lot of federal workers who are not showing up for work, you mm. know, four years after COVID. So I do believe we could cut as much as a trillion dollars out of the federal budget and Americans in Main Street USA wouldn't even notice it was missing. You know, there's some uh, interesting U.S. Census data that just came out about state-to-state -state migration patterns in 2023, yeah. and we have kind of like a breakdown of that as well. More than twice as many Americans moved from California and New York to Florida and Texas than the other way around, and it doesn't seem like uh, the weather here is a factor. What are some of the reasons people are moving to some of these uh, some of these states? Yeah, this is uh, this is really showing that uh, California and New York are falling way behind Florida and Texas. And, you know, by the way, if these trends continue in the next 20 to 25 years, Texas could overtake California as really? the most popular state in America. We saw a few years ago that Florida now has more residents than New York. So, by the way, what do Florida and New York, I mean, Florida and Texas have in common? They're both states that don't have a state income tax. See, I have a lot of people, especially people with money, who are moving into those two states. and. California and New York happen to have the highest income taxes in the country, and a lot of rich people are moving out of those states. All right. Trump economic advisor and co-author of the new book, The Trump Economic Miracle. Steve Moore, of course, thank you so much for joining us, as you always do. And good information, of course.